Ball fake, jumper. Ripped away. Six seconds left. Turnaround, it's Coleman. Missed it. Nemhard. I'm not sure Mark Few is going to be in a great mood when he gets into the locker room. Because no. the Bulldogs had an early run and the Demons have hung around. Well, after a 19 to 5 start, this has been effectively an even game. Northwestern State has done a nice job of, of kind of controlling the tempo. I mean, Gonzaga's had spurts in transition uh, and spurts offensively, despite maybe not knocking down shots of getting good looks. But we've seen some stretches where they've been careless with the ball and certainly some frustration, I would imagine, in that locker room. Northwestern State has won just one game, but you wouldn't know it by the hustle and some of the plays they've made in this first half. Gonzaga, a 43-30 at the half. Stick around, we're coming back to the kennel after this. All right, happy holidays, everybody. We're back, downtown Spokane, always so festive with the lights. Good place to be on a chilly night. The Bulldogs have a 13-point lead, but you have a feeling they, they're not real happy about it. Uh, Rich Waltz along with Richard Fox, who's such a nice guy that he's actually sitting down and I'm standing <laughs> up. The, the seven-footer, the big rebounder from uh, Gonzaga. But I, I don't know that Mark Few is gonna be all that pleased with a 13-point lead right now. No, and I think just the inconsistency of that first half. You had some good stretches, and then you you, know, you had some little sloppy portions of the first half. But look, let's be honest. There's going to be a bit of a hangover or letdown, I would think, um, after the four games you just got done playing, and you're heading into a holiday break. I think Coach Few and that staff are going to try to snap these guys back a little bit and get their attention. Uh, Corey Kispert looked like he was ready to rock and roll from the very start. I mean, he hit a, a couple threes, and he was off and flying on a really nice first half. Really nice, and you just see how decisive he is. And this is what you want from your senior leader in, in kind of an odd environment, first game home, at home in a long time. But it's not just the three-point shooting. Uh, it's defensively, he's so 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 much, so improved. He's able to get out of transition. He's doing an excellent job this year at finishing at the rim, something he struggled with in years past. And then he's rebounded, five rebounds there in the first half, a couple of those offensively. Yeah, well, look, I mean, it, we talked about it. This is the type of game where you got to bring your own juice. The opponent is going to provide it for you. It's not like you're facing a top 15 yeah. team. And, and you need games like this. You need to figure out how to play in an environment when the opponent is not Iowa or someone like that. Well, not just that. With, you know, Gonzaga plays effectively in California. Uh, they'll play again in Portland. This is probably what they're going to experience in league play or empty gyms. Yeah. You've got to create this energy on your own, this almost bunker mentality. Coach Few will talk about all the time. This is a great learning learning experience. Well, we're trying to create our own uh, juice here as well. 43-30. Gonzaga on top back after this. The Gonzaga Halftime Report is brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino. Join us at Coeur d'Alene Casino for a mouthwatering steak dinner, pampering spa treatment, or the hottest games around. Coeur d'Alene Casino, proud sponsor of Gonzaga Athletics. Winning, it's in our nature. That's well, a 43-30 halftime lead for number one Gonzaga, their home opener. Ah, uh, there he is. The pride of the Bulldogs. Adam Morrison is here tonight in the house along with some, it's a koala, a wallaby, I'm not sure. <laughs> and I appreciate the opportunity to pinch hit Rich Waltz along with Rich, Richard Fox here. This has been fun, bud. Let's, let's do a Northwestern State because their run, when they brought it within single digits, was done mostly by their bench. Yeah, 22 points off the bench. They've played seven guys off that bench, 12 total. And we expected to see that some tonight from Northwestern State, but they've gotten a big lift, only two turnovers from their bench players. So not only those guys come in and score the ball, they haven't turned it over. All right, let's take a look at the stats and we can talk about Carvel T-Set. Uh, he has 10 points off the bench uh, for Northwestern State. It's a team look. They like up-tempo. Obviously, they're they're outmatched, uh, but shooting 35%. Where do you want to clean things up if you're Gonzaga? Well, you don't see it there. Five turnovers, rather seven turnovers for GU. That's led to seven point, or points off those turnovers for 
uh, Northwestern State. So you want to clean it up offensively, be a little bit more consistent. Uh, it's hard. You look at that stat sheet, you think we're, we're doing all right. But the energy and protecting the ball, I think, are what they're going to focus on. All right, second half is coming up. The Demons and the Bulldogs. Home opener, great to be back in the kennel. Wish you were here. Hope you're enjoying the show. Northwestern State's putting up a pretty good fight. We talked about Carvel T set off the bench with his 10 points. Kispert has done a lot of damage from distance. Brian White, the little five foot six point guard, has five points for Northwestern State. Timmy has been running the floor quite well. He's got eight as well. Second half when we return. Bulldogs by 13. McCarthy Athletic Center here tonight, 43-30, ready for the second half. Now, they, the, the Bulldogs have done a terrific job of putting cutouts, and there's a lot of famous uh, GU alum sports figures. There's a few suggestions that I have, and I, I want yours as well. John Stockton obviously belongs here. got to have him. Where's Mike Redman, former uh, Bulldog baseball great, major league manager, now bench coach with the Rockies, and two guys who are not necessarily Gonzaga guys, when I was coming here to do games back in the day, it was one of the best things about coming to the old kennel and, and seeing them was Judd Heathcote yeah, Judd. And, and Don Munson. Uh, Judd has passed away. Coach Munson is still with us. They were like the Stadler and Waldorf of basketball coaches, you know, the Muppet characters. <laughs> you could go up and, and just bounce anything off of them. Well, well, let's just say I, I got to know uh, Don a little bit, yeah. and the stories were yeah. uh, I mean, that, not, those, not, not, not fit for sharing today, but nonetheless, they were great. No. But I, I'd love to see them in, in cutout form. Uh, well, yeah. you know, it's a long year. I, I wonder if they'll swap them out, change them up. I mean, and, and I you, see the Queen of England over there. I mean, it, she's got to stay every game. I if you have any Bulldog cutouts you'd like, I'm sure they're open to suggestions. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see if Gonzaga can put the pedal down. Pick and roll and Timmy with the flush. It's the third time we've seen that tonight, Rich. Those two are so good in that pick and roll. Suggs just waits to the right time to deliver the ball. It makes Timmy's life so easy on the catch. Let's see if Northwestern State can put up a fight. Suggs from Nemhard. Kispert. Suggs in the middle of it again. And a quick timeout by Mike McConathy. Man, like the way this has started. Defense leads to offense, Richard Fox. Hey. Great teams find easy ways to score Suggs. They're easy pick and roll. Timmy's showing you that explosiveness, two-hand finish. Nemhard with the steal. Suggs with his six assists of the night of beauty. Gonzaga comes to play in the second half, up 17. Mark Few has tweaked his uh, starting five, if you will, to start this half with Andrew Nemhard in there. Yeah, I, I would say this is their best lineup, and I think in crunch time and in big games or any game, quite frankly, as you move through the year, this is the five you're going to see more often than not. Just with, when you add Nemhard to that that mix and you just put Timmy as the lone big, Zag is very difficult to defend with the shooting they have, and then defensively they can switch just about anything. Gonzaga had a 15-point lead five minutes into this game, and it looked like they were going to roll. But Northwestern State, out of the Southland Conference, hung around, hit shots like that, and kept themselves in the game. Jarius Roberson, the senior, out of Dallas. Second three of the night for That's Roberson. a charge on Suggs. Second one tonight there for Suggs. And here's the three, just a tough finish. A good defense from Ayayi, just a better shot. And those are the kind of shots Northwestern State's going to have to hit here in the second half to, to keep this close. This is a much more focused GU group defensively to start this second half. Roberson draws a little more attention from Ayayi here. Trenton Massner off a of screen. Out of the double, Nemhart cuts him off. Massner stepped on the baseline. It's a turnover and a good defensive sequence for Gonzaga. 
Master quick six shots to start this game has not gotten another look at the basket since Gonzaga's really bottled him up. And it's a tall order. I mean, Gonzaga's length with the Yagi, Nemhard, uh, Suggs, and Kispert and his versatility. I mean, you're you're playing against somebody who's six four, six five on every catch. Suggs' line right now is a, a really interesting one. Seven points, five rebounds, six assists. Has a couple turnovers. He against Iowa did turn it over seven times, but he did so many other great things that you, you give him a, a mulligan on that. <laughs> yeah, I would think you don't harp on those too much. You know, but that's also coming off a long layover, you know, and he handles the ball so much for GU. I think the staff anticipated uh, some struggles offensively taking care of the ball. It stays with Northwestern State. To me, that was one of the most impressive things about the Iowa win was Gonzaga was essentially shut down uh, until right before the game. They had just two practices. Two practices going into the game, but 16, 18 days, I can't recall exactly, but you know, they went 10 days without being able to get anybody in the gym. So, uh, tremendous effort. Kispert. Nemhard gave it up. Kispert flushed it. He's got 19 on seven of nine shooting. Nemhard now with two assists, four rebounds, and two steals. And that's the thing, the versatility. You, you, you talk Suggs line, Rich, Ayayi's got that MO, Nemhard. All these guys can do a little bit of everything. Uh, they're not specialists, they're really well rounded. Jamari Gregg into the corner for Jones, short on the three. Nemhard Suggs the catch, Suggs the finish. And the Bulldogs now are rolling. Now they've really opened this thing up. Three minutes in, second half. It's been this end of the floor. And just, you know, don't just watch the ball. Watch the switching action away. You know, on screens going away, guys will switch. It makes it really hard to get clean catches. Owens going hard. And he takes the brunt of a six foot seven, 300 pounder, Larry Owens, with the charge. Timmy kind of dares him to shoot. He steps in, second charge of the night for Timmy. Does an excellent job at that. Not a shot blocker in the traditional sense, but does an excellent job with positionally, defensively being in the right spot. Nemhard feeds the post. Timmy drop steps, swings it up. And there's Kispert, offside rebound, put back. And he's got 21 now on 8 of 10 shooting. Third offensive rebound of the night as well for Kispert. He's got a, a really good shot at a double-double. He's at six rebounds overall, but with the 21 points. And the lead's at 20. It's an off-balance jumper and a nice one by Trenton Massner, an Idaho native. Nemhard beats him down the floor, and that, that can't make Mike McConathy very happy, the head coach at Northwestern State. Especially off the make. You've got to get back defensively through the Demons. And this has been a pattern for the Demons. Play well in the first half, and then in the second half, lose ground in a hurry. Jamari Gregg squares up and knocks down a jumper. Suggs is met with a shoulder. Well, I like Brian White of Northwestern State. Five foot six, little dynamo, a lot of hustle. 55-37, Bulldogs. Happy holidays, everybody. Bulldogs are home. Home for the holiday, well, sort of, and then it's off to Fort Worth to take on Virginia. 55-37 right now. Biggest lead has been 20. Upcoming schedule, yes, that's not a typo. Northwestern State is here tomorrow night as well. And then Virginia, and that game is in Fort Worth. Northern Arizona scheduled to come in here, Dixie State. And then San Francisco, who was uh, much improved last year and will be good this year, that opens the West Coast Conference on January 2nd. The West Coast Conference has had some really nice wins. BYU knocking off uh, San Diego State. And so you got to think BYU, St. Mary's, Lorenzo Romar's team down at Pepperdine is really good. They've had some nice moments 
in non-conference. Kispert misses, tip to Timmy, and he follows it in with a soft touch. His hands are just unbelievable. He's able to just gather the ball, keep it up over his head. You know, you were talking about Timmy's presence inside. We haven't really talked about Ben Gregg, the, the youngster out of uh, Clackamas, Oregon, the 6'10". He, he's not just a freshman, he's a, a high school senior who has been able to enroll early. And of course, with this year, everybody gets a free year of eligibility. Once he gets settled in and enrolled and, and all of that, uh, you can add him to the front line. Yeah, look, I mean, even in the year with as many fits and starts as this one has had, as a guy who misses the three on the, in the, on the wing, Greg's going to get a look. I mean, he's just too talented. He's got great size at 6'10". He's exactly what G wants, obviously. I mean, a really skilled big player who uh, can compete defensively. And I think Gonzaga, that's the one area in, on, in the rotation that I think you'd like to see them get a little bit more depth, and that's up front. And he's a kid who can maybe do that. And Suggs with, with the rebound there. They're going to leave him open. He'll take the three and bury it. I mean, just yeah. bury it. You know, the impressive thing, Rich, about Suggs is the game, despite how young he is, and I know he's a super talented kid. He's played big games in high school. The game is slow for him. He rarely gets sped up. He makes really good decisions consistently. You typically see a young guard struggle with the speed of the game initially. We haven't seen that uh, adjustment at all for, for Suggs. He's come ready. With Western State, this is Roberson. Did not beat the clock. Didn't seem that way. Yeah, I thought got that late, but. Timmy finds Nemhard running the baseline. And just the ability. I mean, it, it just, it's hard to find bigs that can do that. Uh, transition your offense in, on the fast break. Second time we've seen that here from Timmy. In the first half, he delivered it. A great pass to Watson for the layup and right there for Nemhard. Easy to. White got popped pretty good by Suggs without a whistle. Roberson floater. Timmy another rebound. He's got seven on the night. Timmy also has four assists. Suggs kicks. Ayai skips it. Nemhard a three. Timmy another rebound and free throws coming. One of the most impressive things from an outsider's perspective, which I am, about what the Gonzaga Bulldogs have done, because I know the start of this. I was around when Fitz was, you know, just getting it going, and then months, and obviously Mark Fitz, and to watch it from afar and then get back closer to it. One of the most impressive things to me, and this is no insult to your generation of players past, whether it's Morrison or Santangelo or Dickow or Step. The level of athlete obviously has yeah. risen. I mean, you have one of the top recruits ever is here now with Suggs. But somehow, this staff has been able to keep the zag in these guys. I mean, these are top players. These are NBA type players. These are some of the best players in the country. Yet they still have that intangible. They still have that chemistry. They still have what has made Gonzaga successful, that zag. And it's, I mean, Around basketball, people know what that means. Yeah, the word zag means. And and you guys had it. These guys have it. They're just a lot better than we were. <laughs> I'm <laughs> glad you truth. finished my sentence. That's the truth. <laughs> uh, look, I mean, the length, the athleticism, and I think you've really seen that change in the backcourt. In second set, I mean, Kevin Pangos comes to mind, a tremendous player, one of the best careers of all time, but just didn't have the length and athleticism we're seeing now in the program. Uh, and I think that for GU, that they're still really selective in who they recruit. They were that way when I was around. They wanted guys who could fit into what they were trying to do, the culture. Kispert. And if you don't think that's important, recruiting guys that fit the, the Zag profile, which these guys do despite their lofty talent, take a look at Kentucky right now. Yep. Take a look at some of the, the teams that, that are seen as national powers, and they have gone through dips. They have gone through spells where they've not been the dominant programs. 
And obviously Gonzaga has, has been really consistent. You're going to miss on a few. They certainly have yeah. at, at times. But it's amazing to me they've kept that part of their program intact. Well, you look at some other top level freshmen. Cape Cunningham comes to mind at Oklahoma State. I mean, that's a good program, but obviously not one with the story history that GU's had the last 20 years. You know, he doesn't have a lot of help. I mean, Jalen Suggs can come here, be part of something bigger than himself, be involved in big games, have a chance to go to the Final Four. That only helps his development. Uh, and I think Gonzaga's got a great story to tell, to your point. And Kispert is an NBA player. I mean, they, they yeah. told him he was an NBA player last year. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think a guy like Ayayi, Nambahar, these are guys who are going to get a strong look at that level. Whistle and contact and free throws coming. John Norvell will get free throws when we return. 64-39. Gonzaga. For those of you that haven't seen Ben Gregg, here you go. And you'll probably see a lot of them in a Gonzaga uniform for the next four, maybe even five years, if you want to count this one. What does he add, Richard Fox, to this team? Super skilled, big at 6'10", and, or, you know, and change. Uh, can play both spots, quite frankly, you know, at this level. He's just an uber-talented kid, top 30. And you say four or five years, I think the staff would be thrilled if he was here for three. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, you're right. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, a huge addition, and we see him there uh, going through the uh, COVID protocols here at Gonzaga. Uh, no, I don't have a clear timeline on when he'll be able to, to join the, uh, the team on the bench, but uh, I suspect that he will have a, a, a role to play at some point this year. Uh, you can't deny talent. And the reason I dropped in that extra year was just to illustrate how unique this season is, not just with COVID it really and the is, pandemic, yeah. the fact that two things uh, everybody gets an extra year of eligibility so this year doesn't count so you can essentially play this year and play four more years if you want or if you're you know if the coach wants <laughs> right. as well the other thing is you know and coaches are going to have to deal with this across the country coming in a, in a month or so it is what sounds like it's going to happen where everybody can transfer without losing right. a year yep. um, you, you're curious to see who is that going to benefit? Who is that going to hurt? Well, I suspect Gonzaga, given their track record of transfers, we got a couple on the floor now, and Cook and Nembhard uh, will be poised to maybe capitalize on that. Um, it's an interesting dynamic. I mean, for a guy like Harrison Strother, who you know, are trying to get minutes on the number one team in the country, they can effectively look at this as a redshirt year, yes. improve their game, but actually get to apply whatever it is they're working on in some live action uh, you know, situations that that's pretty beneficial for a guy long term, I would think. John Norvell in for the Demons. This is Norvell trying to cross over. He's lost the ball. He's lost the shot clock, but he almost banked in a 30-footer. And the rebound taken down by the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Anton Watson kicked right back. Zelen Baba. Reed is cut off by Nemhart. Twenty-four point lead. We're halfway through the second half. Zelen Baba. Oh, that's a great name. Yovan Zelen Baba. He's out of Israel. And just a sophomore. He's older though. Twenty-two. Had his two years of mandatory military commitment in Israel. Six points now off the bench. He's a nice, uh, a nice piece for them. And one key in the recruiting of him, Mike McConathy coached his father in junior college. That's right. You and I both learned that at our production meeting this afternoon. That's right, that's right. Good job. Couple tips. And finally, it's Kispert who's having a, a big night, 25 points, nine of 12 from the field, six rebounds. Suggs has got a dozen, Timmy's got a dozen and eight rebounds. Suggs has got seven rebounds and seven assists. So he's within reach of a triple-double. Not sure how much he's going to get a, a shot to play here in the last 10 minutes, but it's possible. This is Reed in traffic, blocked by Watson. 
Reed got it back. No reset on the shot clock. And the Bulldogs are going to get it. The 9.45 left. Substitutions coming in. For that man, Mike McConathy, in his 22nd year. Kisper, a little blow by, but Watson steps up, and that's, you know, that's why he's on the floor primarily, is defensively, he needs to be elite on that end. The offense will come, uh, but I think this staff at times gets a bit frustrated with the consistency d d defensively. Uh, but that was a nice play there on the help side. Aaron Cook in the ball game with Nemhard, hard around the screen, turned down a three. That's a great drop step when he received the pass. Watson sealed and finished. Well, the position too, both feet in the paint on the catch, and a strong finish from Watson. Good shot fake by T. Set. He's been a bright spot here tonight. Be interesting to see what kind of night he has tomorrow night because these two teams are right back here. You can watch him again tomorrow night. Hey. Round two. And a foul inside. Watson collects himself. We talked earlier about Northwestern State. It's yeah. a small school, small town. 11,000 is the enrollment. Natchitoches, Louisiana, established as part of French Louisiana back in the 1700s. This was at our production meeting as well this yes. afternoon. You know, you think I would have known that. I was actually born in that, New Orleans. Well, that was that you stepped out to get something to eat. <laughs> but I told you earlier that there's some uh, famous uh, sports figures that have come from that city of 17,000. Joe Dumars, the great Marcus Johnson of UCLA fame. How about a quarterback? You need a quarterback. Bobby Hebert, remember the old New Orleans Saints? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a Hall of Famer, Major League Baseball Hall of Famer, Lee Smith, who did not play baseball there, but he played basketball. Okay. Because he was already in the minor league, so he played basketball at Northwestern State. Look at that step through, finish. <laughs> finish, but comes off of Watson. Defensively again, steps up, gets his hand on the ball. Another deflection, here he is again. It's 27 and seven, which was the line that Suggs had against Iowa. That's what the Kispert has here tonight. You see the deflection, Watson, active hands. And this is where Kispert has become special. In transition, able to finish. You can either do it above the rim, or there with a nice step through. I love what the coaches told us today about him. Coming back, could have left, probably would have been a draft pick. And he came back with a purpose, not just to play here. His entire workout from the day he's decided to come back to where he is now has all been geared towards the NBA. And it's intense, and it's NBA level, and he hasn't taken a day off. That's a nice block, a trail block by Watson. Nemhard out ahead, Harris. Soft tip, trailing, that's Aaron Cook. Yeah, I'm gonna harp, harp on this probably all year with Cook. He is not gonna get the love he deserves, you know, publicly, but this staff loves what he brings. Great experience at Southern Illinois, he can shoot the three a little bit as Watson comes up with another steal. And Strother with the two-hand finish. And nice showing here tonight for Strother off the bench. Well, remember that run Northwestern State made in the, in the first half to get within single digits. They obviously are in trouble here. Gonzaga regrouped at halftime and came out and put the, put the hammer down like that. Gonzaga Hoops is brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. This season, Numerica Credit Union is proud to celebrate every Gonzaga assist with a $100 donation, up to $7,500, to Children's Miracle Network in support of local sick and injured children. Numerica Credit Union, life moves, live well. Home opener for the number one team in the country, and it's going quite well here, 76-45. Bulldogs on top. In fact, so well that it's already time to announce our player of the game presented by A to Z Rental. Richard Fox had the only ballot in this one. It was yep, a pretty that, easy choice. As it should be. Uh, yeah, look, 10 of 13 from the field. Uh, really impressed with his ability on the glass. Four offensive rebounds for Corey. 
no turnovers defensively. He's competed, and it's not just a three-point shot anymore. He's shooting about 80% inside the arc as well, able to finish, finish in transition uh, in and around taller players at the rim. Uh, it's all coming together for Corey Kispert here as a senior. And our thanks to A to Z Rental. Let A to Z Rental be your most valuable player. Appreciate the opportunity to pinch hit here tonight with you. It's been a blast. This man. is fun seeing these guys. It, you know, there have been some moments for this Northwestern State team. And it's Trenton Massner who thought he was fouled. <laughs> a lot of the contact at the rim. Although I think if you jump into Balo, you're going to probably feel it. You see Balo with the hustle trying to get back. He's vertical there. That's it. A good no call despite the contact as he hits the floor. He's not just seven feet tall, he's 260, or at least listed at 260. Well, he looks about that. He's a big kid. Now that, they feel this guy has a big ceiling. He's already played in some big games and had big moments in, in some key spots. Yeah, it's a, 2019, the under-19 FIBA tournament, 18 points a game, 12 rebounds, uh, something like four blocks. I mean, all, all tournament team, all that all that stuff. And you show, he has all the tools you'd want for a five. He's just so young. <laughs> you got, got to let a kid, particularly a big what? kid, kind of grow into what he's going to end up being. I think his trajectory or his his career path will be a lot like Rui Hachimura's was, a kid who got spot minutes early but really accelerated his ability as he got more, more minutes. Well, Balo last year was the youngest player in college basketball at 17, even though he redshirted. He just turned 18 now. And this is his second year in the yeah, program. Look, I mean, he's 18 years old. He needs some time to grow into that body. <laughs> to kind of figure out what he's doing. He's so raw when he got here. Oh, Roberson. Straight on 23 footer. Bulldogs pushing tempo. They've run pretty well tonight. Harris followed calling for the ball in the low blocks. This is Watson muscles in. Nice job holding the ground and Zellin Baba. Roberson another three. Line drive three. And he hits it. There's some players here for Northwestern State. Roberson's four three of the night. Quick release. One of the toughest things to do right now for a college basketball team is travel. And I mean, go on the road and play games. The Bulldogs have flown a lot of miles in a lot of places. But for a team like Northwestern State, they are making a tour of, of a variety of, of places. I told you that the road games they've played at TCU, at Tulsa. This road trip started in, at Missouri State. They lost by 27. They're here tonight. They play again tomorrow night. And then the next night, they're in they Pullman. Yeah. So they're going to play five games in six days and three games in three nights on this Northwest stretch. <laughs> 29 point lead. Northwestern State plays in the Southland Conference. Last year they finished fifth, and this year they are picked tenth, and they've lost some talent to graduation. Stephen F. Austin has been the class of that league for a long time. Now. Yeah, for a while, and they again are in the sister city of Nacogdoches in Nacogdoches, Texas. Harris knocks down a three, his second of the night. He said it's a good stroke. He looks comfortable shooting it out there, particularly on the catch versus trying to get to that shot off the bounce. And this is this is part of the importance of games like this, is getting the, the Harris's and the Cooks and the Strothers out there and the Ballos and let them play consecutive minutes. Well, I, I think in any year, but particularly this year, with, with everything that's happening with COVID, I mean, if you've got a guy that's out that you can contact trace and so you can still play your game, you need these kids to have some feel for what it is you're trying to do on the floor. That's a great point. Because you're going to have to play games without starters. That is a brilliant switch of the hand as Harris went down the lane, changed hands, and then used well, the rim as protection to finish. Ryan Michelson told both of us one of the if not the best, certainly right up to the top of the list as far as athletes go uh, on this roster. And you saw it right there with his ability to finish uh, in the paint. I want to get your point on, on something we, we talked to the coaches about today. There's that switch to the right hand. 
And Brian Michelson told us something that, you know, you ask, hey, look, you're 4-0, you're number one in the country. What would you like to clean up? And uh, what are you proudest of? There's a lot to be to like right now. But turnovers, they'd like to clean that up. And, yep. and, and he had this to say, and it's interesting to say it at this point of the season. And, and, and the statement was, how good of a rebounding and defensive team we can be will determine how good this team will be in March. Will they be an elite eight team? Will they be a final four team? Can they be national champions? And his point was, we can be if we really Im improve our rebounding and we really become an elite defensive team. Well, particularly defensively, I think. You, you look at where they're at now, field goal percentage uh, defensively, they're 219th in the country. That's not good enough. Now, they play a super high tempo. They want to get a ton of possession, so you're less concerned about the amount of points they're giving up for you know, the quality of looks. And then from a field goal percentage perspective, they've got to tighten things up a little bit. But look, I mean, for where can you compare where they are versus everybody else in the, in the country right now, they are way ahead of schedule. And, and so they've got some time to kind of tighten this stuff up. And um, it'll be interesting as uh, they can kind of work through some of this rotation, the, the, uh, the rotation. A guy like Greg, you know, does Watson continue to get a little bit better on both ends of the floor? I, th I certainly think the talent and the ability is there, Rich, uh, to become a, a top-end defensive team. And obviously the, the caliber of opponent, I mean, Kansas, right. Auburn, West Virginia, Iowa right out of the gate. That's going to skew the numbers a that's bit a, as well. This is Roberson, who's hit a couple threes here. Carvel Tset is a fun player to watch. Jones against Harris, got by him, and Ballo blocks the shot, and the shot clock goes off. Well, if you're looking for shot blocking on this roster, it's right there with Ballo. I mean, this is something he's got a natural ability to do, and you just see his size, his wingspan able to come over, good timing. Uh, he just has to learn how to do that consistently, and also how not to you know, commit some silly fouls that force him to come off the floor. Follow sealed, but couldn't flush it. Gets it back. Throws it away. T set. Carvel T set for Northwestern State. He's put together a game. 14 points. Now six of nine from the field. It's good help side there by Roberson. And a floater in the lane, that's contact, and that's a foul. It's a good drive by T-Set. Demons have some players. I know they're up against number one right now, but they've had some moments tonight. Bulldogs up big late in the second half. It's time now for the Gonzaga Hoops plays of the game. Plays brought to you by MultiCare Health System and Richard Fox. Hey, this is where Gonzaga's at their best, and that's a transition average about 22 a game. Coming into tonight, 25 points in transition. Nobody does it better converting from the defensive end to the offensive end. And they've got so many guys who can finish in transition. Uh, it makes it awfully tough for you if you're trying to play uh, GU in any kind of fast pace. Whether you're at home or in the kennel, MultiCare's team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. Even the cardboard cutouts need attention in the kennel. There's plenty of them here. We've been talking about some of the Gonzaga history in the cutouts. If you could bring a figure from Gonzaga history and, and make a cutout, who would your choice be? Steve Hertz. I mean, he might already be out here, but legendary. Oh, that's a very good call. Coach Hertz has to be. That's a very good call. Yeah, quite frankly, you ask me, they should have a statue of him somewhere on campus. That guy's a legend. 30 point ball game. Good run here by the second unit for Gonzaga. Aaron Cook double teams. Cook, of course, a transfer from Southern Illinois. He could shoot it as well. There's the shot fake, clears for the three, missed it short. 
and a held ball. There was a reset on the missed shot. And the arrow is going Northwestern State's way. Not the outcome you wanted. Cook short on the jump shot, but really good movement for the secondary unit. You know, swinging the ball onto either side. Ballo has a nice ball screen up top, which leads to the open look for Cook. And I think as a staff, you want to see this. Can you guys, as a second unit, continue to run our offense effectively? These guys have done it the last few minutes. Northwestern State is one of the best tempo teams in the country. They're 11th in the nation in terms of tempo. They like to play fast, although. Decidedly tonight they slowed it down because I think that, that might not have been the best idea against this Gonzaga ball club. As it is, they're down by 30, but you get the idea if they had really sped it up, it'd be more than 30. Strother misses badly on a three. Cook with a long rebound. How about a corner three from Watson? And you can just see him breathe a sigh of relief. After that one went in. That's his first three of the season. He's got 13 tonight to go with six rebounds and four assists. Yeah, it was, yeah it's just this second half, you know, he doesn't get the start in the second half. Obviously, the staff frustrated with his first half effort. He's done a really good job of responding here uh, to what the staff is wanting him to do. And I think for a guy like Watson, you know, focus on the defensive side of the ball, be active, rebound, the offense will come. Uh, I think at times young players in particular, if the shots, the ball's not going in, it impacts everything else in their game. Uh, even when you're not making shots, you got to find a way to help. Well, three blocks, four steals, four assists, six rebounds, 13 points. That's a good line. That's a really good line. And he's, you know, look, he's having to be the glue guy, but he's a glue guy that certainly could take charge. If you needed him to get your points, he could do it. Will Graves is in the ball game for Gonzaga. Well, look, Watson's one of the best players to come out of the state of Washington last decade. I mean, won multiple state championships, player of the years, all that good stuff. Strother off the nice feed from Balo, young big fella showing some good feel there. So, look, let's not harp on it. Watson's got all the pieces you'd want. Tonight, in this second half, he's done a nice job putting those things together. Zelen Baba on the drive, and he's fouled, and he'll get to the line. What have you learned tonight about the uh, Gonzaga Bulldogs? I know this is not a, a top 15 team. They've beaten three of those. They're 4-0. The depth's real. I mean, you know, Mark's effectively played seven. If, you know, if you want to count Paulo in some limited minutes, eight guys against these top-line teams. Uh, but you saw glimpses from Strother, from Harris, uh, even Balo tonight. Guys, I think that as the year progresses and, they, and those guys get some more reps, are guys that the staff may feel more and more comfortable putting in the game for extended stretches in some of these bigger games. Uh, this is an immensely talented group. I think the other thing that, that the coaching staff is going to be happy with is the way the team has rebounded. Because back to that point about how good can this team be, well, as good as their defense and their rebounding, it's team rebounding. They don't have a dominant rebounder. No, but what they do, their, their backcourt is so good rebounding the ball. I mean, Ayayi leads this team at better than 10 a game on the glass. Suggs is something around four and a half. You know, Nebhardt's doing a better job of rebounding. And Kispert, if you want to throw him into that backcourt, is also a high-level rebounder. They do an excellent job of what the staff would call gang rebounding. You know, when you've got dominant bigs up front, think Sabonis for GU folks. Often the shot went up, you could kind of relax. You knew a guy like that was going to take care of picking up the rebound. They don't have that luxury, and I think they've done a really good job of coaching these guys up to say, when shot goes up, we've got five guys on the glass. And it's interesting, you know, Balo hits that. In, in basketball uh, speak, team rebounding allows that team to play fast. Yep. Yeah, if, you, if a guy gets a defensive rebound, he can spark the break. Uh, quite frankly, if the big guys get the rebound, they can spark the break. I mean, that's a luxury this program has that a lot of teams don't. Yeah, I mean, that's a big reason why they're so lethal in transition is whoever gets the rebound can either bring it up themselves or they've got guys filling on the wing who can make a play themselves. You see Ball here flying in, trying to make a big play, commits the foul, but you like the hustle from the young kid. 91-57. Minute and a half left. Glad you're with us tonight. Look, we wish that everybody 
was here. We wish that the, the kennel was full. But in the absence of that, it's just great to see this team on this floor. And, and for many of you, you've been watching the, the, the great wins over Kansas, Auburn, Iowa, West Virginia. This has always been such a big home court advantage in conference, even in non-conference games. Well, I tell you what, I hope I call it, but if I don't, I'm gonna get a ticket to that first game back with the fans. It's gonna be a rowdy in the kennel. Graves with the rebound. Strother. Hello. Hey. And Strother, the freshman out of Las Vegas. Final seconds. Big night for Anton Watson, a career high. 15 points. Strother's got eight. And these two teams will do it again tomorrow night. Graves with the rebound. He'll hold it. Bulldogs wobbled a bit in the first half. Opened up a 15-point lead. Northwestern State came running back and brought it to single digits. Yeah. Not so much in the second half. Yeah, tip your hat to Northwestern State. And I suspect we'll see the same type of effort tomorrow night, but a good response out of halftime. I think Anton Watson is indicative of that. Uh, tremendous second half from the sophomore. Uh, and you see the talent, you see the depth, and I think for this team, it's gonna be, I think, quite frankly, something a lot of these top teams great, have right? to uh, face this year is when you don't have that marquee opponent, how do you create that energy in, a, in, in, a, in an empty building? You gotta bring your own juice. That's right, I'm gonna use that all year, Rich. That's bring it, Bring the man. juice. Bring the juice, and if the opponent is not Iowa or Kansas or, or whoever, you got to bring your own juice. And the Bulldogs certainly did that in the second half. They win it 95-57. Now that is a great fan. Well, a lot to like for this uh, one tonight. Number one, Gonzaga, 95-57. <laughs> it's not a bad... Uh three to start a team with. No, it's a pretty good trio. They've done a nice job here at the kennel, making it feel like home with the cutouts and the banners and all of that. Rich Waltz along with Richard Fox. What, what did you like about this game tonight? I, I really liked the response in the second half. You know, G with a 13 point lead, but just looks flat, a little lethargic. Uh, I mean, credit Northwestern State. I thought they did a good job of trying to change things up offensively, slowing the game down some. But in that second half, 52 to 27, GU just looked really dialed in. Um, you see the versatility defensively, particularly with Nemhart in the in the lineup. So you've got Kispert at the four. And I really was impressed with Watson tonight. I thought he did an excellent job of responding to being challenged at halftime. It says a lot about his character, and you saw his ability. And if he can play, you know, not, not necessarily that stat line every night, but with that enthusiasm and that effort, that that that's just a huge benefit for this team this year. And Dominic Harris looked good off the bench as well. Schedule, now of course, Northwestern State at that odd tweak to the schedule, they decided let's play two, and they will tomorrow night. Uh, and you'll, you out there will get a chance to, to see that game. And then Virginia, and then it'll be the fifth game of this kind of arranged schedule. And they're uh, number 16 right now, who knows, uh, maybe by then they'll be back in the top 15. That could be four top 15 teams that the Bulldogs will have faced, and that game is in Fort Worth. The San Francisco game here on January 2nd opens West Coast Conference. Yeah, look, Virginia, despite the, the, the hiccup against San Francisco, credit the Dons, is still technically the defending national champ, and we know what to expect uh, with that program. That's going to be a very physical game, uh, defensive game, but very different than maybe some of the other games that GU's played. It's going to be a nice change of pace, and to your point, look, this is Mark Few's MO. We want to play the best. And that's going to be a great opportunity after Christmas. All right. Final tonight, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, number one in the country, a 95-57 win. Thanks for the invite, Richard. This was fun tonight. Anytime. All right. And again, tomorrow night, they're right back at it. Bulldogs 
and Demons for our entire production crew. I'm Rich Waltz. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow night.